Mally sales for Blossom. Hello, Blossom people. Welcome to the Salesforce Blossom channel. This is our first flow practice use case. In this case, we are going to learn how to use the loop element in Flow. So if you're new to Flow, loop element is one of the first topic that you have to get familiar with. So today we're going to use a very easy use case to show you how you can use the loop element. So the learning goal today is we want to be able to use the loop element to access or modify each item in a collection variable. If you are unsure when you should use the loop element, you can check out my loop element introduction video. And the business case we are having today is when an account is marked as inactive, which is a checkbox, we want to close all the related cases. So let's just go ahead and jump into Salesforce. So go to your flow page and click on new flow. Because we want to close all the related cases when the account record is changed. So we will use the record trigger flow to achieve this. Then this record trigger flow should run on updated. Because in this case, we won't create an account as inactive. Then regarding when to run the flow, because we're updating the related records of account, so we will use the after trigger. Then come to the choose object. We will choose account for our flow. And the condition is when the active checkbox is false. This means that the account will be marked as inactive. And about when to run the flow, we want to choose the second option. This will mean that the flow will only run when my active checkbox is unchecked. We don't want a flow to run every time an account is updated. We only want it to run when the condition is met and only the first time. So we will choose the second option. So because we are updating all the related cases, the first step is to get all the related cases. For that, we will use the get records element. So after specify the label and the API name, we can specify which object we want to get. And the condition here, because we are getting the related cases, so we will have to say the account should be the account that triggered this flow. So we will use the record global variable and use the account ID. And we don't need to sort all the cases because we're closing them. And here we will choose all records because we're closing all the cases. So to read this in English, I'm saying I want to get the case where the account is the one that triggered this flow and I want to get all of them. So this get records element will return a collection variable. Then because it's a collection variable, if we want to modify each case item, we will have to use a loop to unpack them. So let's drag our loop element onto the canvas. And then choose the collection variable from our get records element. So then in this loop, what do we need to do? We will need to first change the case status. Then second, we want to add them into a new collection so we can update them at once at the end of the flow. To do so, first drag an assignment. This we say change the status of current case. And what you will realize is when you click on the variable lookup, you will see there is one current item from loop. So what happened with the loop element is when you create a loop element, the system will create a variable called current item. You can use this variable to change the field value of each case. So here we say, I want the current case and the status. So the status of the current case, I want to change it into closed. And I will save it. So for each item in this collection, I want to change the status to close. 
and then we have to add this updated case into a new collection. So you can either create that collection in the manager tab or click on the variable here and then click new resource. To create collection, we need to choose variable. And we call it updated cases and the data type will be record. The object is case. And then we need to mark allow multiple values. So in this new collection we created, we want to add the current item from this iteration. And then I drag it. So in this loop, I'm saying, first, I use the loop element to unpack my collection. And then for each item in that collection, I want to first update the status, and then I add them into a new collection. So then you will have multiple items from this collection and inside the loop, we will update each item, add them to a new collection. And then remember to connect the last element inside the loop back to your loop element. So then the system will know it has to go into a loop until we finish all the items. So a quick note on why we don't combine these two assignment. It is because if you put them together, the set variable values may not happen in sequence. So let's say if you put updated cases to add the current item, the system might add the current item that hasn't been updated yet. I'm not sure if this is resolved in the latest release. If it is, leave a comment and let us know. Otherwise, just to be sure, you can separate them into two assignments. So after I finish the loop, what I need to do is to update all the cases at once. So I will use an update records element. So the option I will use is I will use the ID from a record or a record collection variable. And the record collection variable is the one that we created to store the updated cases. Choose this and then mark as done. So then from the loop element, I will drag the connector. So let's read this flow in English, starting from the beginning. So this is saying that when one account is marked as inactive, I will get all the related cases. And then for each case, I will update the status, add them to a new collection. And once I finish the actions for all the cases, I will update all the cases at once. So a very important note about why you need to add the updated cases to a collection is because you want to build a really efficient flow. So you don't want to put your data element, which is in pink, inside the loop. Otherwise, you might hit the governance limits very easily. So when you're using loop, try your best to avoid putting the data elements inside the loop. So that's the solution. And let's go ahead and save this click save. So let's debug our flow within the interface. So I will click on debug. And then for debugging the record trigger flow, it will always run in the rollback mode, which means that the update won't actually take place. So I will debug um, one of my accounts. And because we couldn't really change the active checkbox inside the debug mode, so I would just check the skip start conditions and then click run. So you can see my flow is completed successfully. And then here you can see all the debug details. And then now it's saying that all my cases have been updated. All right, so this flow is working properly. So let's see how it works in our actual environment. So I would just activate this flow and then come to my account. So my account Sunflower Company has six different open cases because they have status new. So let me just mark this account as inactive and safe. And now you can see that all the cases are now marked as closed. So this is just an easy example of how to use loop element. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, and turn on notification. 
Sasser Sasson, thank you for watching.